Good evening and welcome to the February 9th, 2021 Selectman's meeting. Tonight is a virtual meeting. It's a little difficult when we're all at home, but we're gonna to start tonight with a Pledge of Allegiance and a flag. I'll recite the pledge. And then if you join me in a moment of silence, please. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of, America. of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, States, one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. Tonight we have uh, two appointments with the chiefs, uh, chief of police and chief of the fire department. And then we have a lot of uh, a lot of paperwork, a lot of business before us this evening. So let's start with our first appointment right away. Chief Brooks, good evening, welcome. We have your written report and the floor is yours, sir. Good evening, everyone. It's nice to see you all. Uh, so for this month, uh, as I think I've mentioned before, um, but just not to leave anyone out, but the retirements of uh, Peter Kelly, who was our deputy chief, and Paul Murphy, who was our school uh, resource officer at the high school, um, uh, that caused uh, promotions to be made within the department. So Christopher Patton, who was a lieutenant, was promoted to deputy chief. Um, Sarah Lyden, who was a sergeant, was promoted to lieutenant, and patrolman Brett Baker was promoted uh, to sergeant. So those officers are all in their new positions and, and being broken in. <clears throat> and everything, all of that is uh, is going well. Um, as far as training goes, uh, you know that we're always uh, we're always training, and Mr. Jar has, uh, has pointed that out. So right now we're doing uh, night firing. We always do that in the winter because we have an indoor range. Uh, uh, thanks to the folks that designed the station that give us an indoor range, but we could do our night firing uh, at this time of year when we could not use an outdoor range, and we do a diminished light firing, which is using a flashlight, not using a flashlight, uh, using the flashlights that are on the firearms. And that sort of thing. All sworn members of the department must go through that. <clears throat> um, we're also uh, running in-service training uh, this month. Uh, this month, um, start with um, starting with mental mental health, um, and also substance use disorder, and also use of force and the duty of officers to intervene when use of force appears um, to be un unwarranted. <clears throat> kind of an interesting story. Just want to share with you. I got uh, an email from a woman. Uh, who told me that her son had dialed 911, causing the police to go to her home. And um, she explained that he was embarrassed and upset that he had called 911. I assured her that kids call, call 911, that's something that happens. But this young boy has uh, Tourette's syndrome. And she wanted the police to pop in to understand a little bit more about Tourette's syndrome. And we've had training on this. Um, but this uh, mother took it upon herself to send us some material about Tourette's syndrome, um, and then also to make a video with her family, uh, with the young boy's um, sister and with her, um, and kind of uh, humanize uh, what we were learning. <clears throat> um, Officer Shaw uh, presented the material, and uh, and then I emailed the woman back and thanked her for helping us with the training. But it was just nice a nice way to close the loop uh, in that um, she had had this issue with her son. Now we understand more about it. And we uh, teamed up with her and partnered with her uh, on the training, uh, which I thought was great. Um, this week we're in um, shot two for the vaccines, um, so that started Monday. Um, I got my shot yesterday. Um, we're doing 30 a day between police and fire. I'll let Chief Maurice uh, comment beyond that, but um, uh, that's happening this week. Um, Sagal Reese and her staff uh, are, doing a, are doing a wonderful job. And um, the other thing I would just point out, and I think I might have mentioned this to you before, but with the result of those motions that have taken place, um, we now have uh, two officers going through the police academy. And uh, it's just my practice not to name those folks while they're still in the academy. We want to make sure that they get through okay. Um, but they're both from Walden. Um, one's a female and the other one is bi bilingual Arabic. Um, so that's uh, those are capabilities that'll be nice to have uh, on the department. Um, so that, that really concludes my, uh, my brief report. I'm happy to answer questions if you'd like. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Maloney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Uh, just a couple of questions. Uh, do you have any uh, anything to offer uh, regarding the ways in which the uh, this year-long uh, change in the way we live has impacted things like overdoses and drug use in general? Have we seen an increase, a decrease, you know, more emergencies or fewer? Um, so as far as overdoses go, nationwide overdoses are up, uh, and we have seen an increase. Last year we had uh, 
Dot, I think in 2019, we had around 20 with uh, two fatal. Um, in uh, 2020, I think we had 29 with two fatal. So the number of overdoses um, went up. Uh, we and um, our partners at the fire department routinely respond to these and administer Narcan. Um, and that's been uh, that's been most helpful, and we've been doing that, I want to say, since 2014. But uh, yes, yeah, so overdoses are up uh, nationwide, um, apparently due to COVID. Um, I think also due to the fact that some of the treatment facilities uh, are unavailable, uh, or they have less space and can take fewer people. And I think that that's been a problem. As far as mental health, um, it's difficult for us to measure that because it, we don't have really mental health as a call type. Sometimes we get a disturbance, sometimes it's a well-being check. There are all sorts of different types of calls that we answer. The other one was a, a woman down lying on the sidewalk. As it turns out, she had left a group home. And she had some mental health issues. Of course, we didn't know that when it came in as a medical call. Um, so we handled that with uh, the fire department. So that's difficult to measure. Um, I'd have to say, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was up uh, just a little bit. Thank you. Uh, my other question, Chief, you mentioned in your report that on uh, Monday, January 4th, you led an online meeting uh, um, uh, with the uh, state court system regarding the new requirements surrounding uh, facial recognition technology and the use thereof. Can you tell us what these new requirements or the, or the legislation is going to require? Uh, that, uh, what are the requirements and how are they different from uh, past practice? Uh, so it used to be that if we had a photograph of somebody we were trying to identify, we would call the Commonwealth Fusion Center, which is staffed by state police. And primarily they use driver's license and liquor ID card and mass ID card photographs. And facial recognition involves <clears throat> essentially showing a photograph to the system. And the system uses uh, an algorithm to plot, um, you know, the shape of the chin and the distance between the eyes and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then produces um, candidates. Uh, so we would just send that to the Fusion Center and they would uh, send us back the results. Uh, as a result of uh, the legislation, now police need a court order for that. Um, but the but the standard is only that we show that it was material and relevant to an ongoing criminal investigation. So upon seeing that the, uh, that the reform legislation passed, uh, I reached out to the court system and asked, and, and I did this too when the red, uh, red flag law came out, you know, can we get together and can we kind of standardize what we're looking at and can we get together between police and the court system? And that has now grown into, uh, we had an online session the other day with the Commonwealth Fusion Center, um, the uh, Department of Criminal Justice Information Services, uh, Legal Counsel for the Mass Chiefs, and we are producing a, a model policy for departments to adopt. And um, going through the court order process, I wrote a sample affidavit, um, and we will uh, button up that circuit that uh, system so that we can continue to use that. It's it's very useful technology. I think what people don't understand is that when you, is, when you send a photograph to the Fusion Center and they send you back candidates that we go out and we arrest somebody. It doesn't work that way. You know, what they send you is candidates, uh, people to consider, people who might potentially have been involved uh, given their similarity to uh, photographs in the file. Um, we use it all the time, but the detectives always conduct an investigation um, using the results that they've obtained back. So, just so that will will the requirement for a court order hereafter mean that that the process will be delayed? And does if so, does that bother you at all? There is a provision that you can put in an emergency, um, and presumably that would be a counterterrorism matter. Um, but for the kinds of cases we normally see, um, we see, for instance, uh, people involved in drug trafficking that have several identification documents issued by the Commonwealth, and when we run the photograph um, against the database, uh, it helps us identify who the person might be. Um, so there are provisions for the, an emergency um, provision, and it can happen very quickly, but honestly, in, in my conversation with the court system, th there's no reason why these orders can't issue at night. There's no provision in the law that requires them to issue by a judge, so clerks and assistant clerks appear to be able to issue these orders. Uh, the Fusion Center runs 24-7, so I actually don't think it's going to uh, slow us down. What we're trying to do is automate the process to the best we can and standardize it so that um, detectives can use the technology quickly and effectively. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Um, 
As you uh, probably know, the last night at town meeting, the, the medical overlay district uh, article passed, which I think is, is great. Um, we heard from Chief Maurice last night, which was excellent, speaking in favor of this. I'm just interested to hear about how the um, the hospital being down, how that's affected you and, and your team. I, I think we hear a lot about how it's affected the fire department and um, just interested uh, to hear your, your take on it. Well, of course, we work uh, very closely with Norwood Fire, as I've mentioned. So the fact that it's affecting them means it's also affecting us. <clears throat> so, for instance, before Norwood Fire would go on a medical, um, they would uh, take the person to essentially the center of town to the emergency room, and they would be back in service quickly. Now they're going to need Brockton to make a plane. So it means that our ambulance is out of service for a longer period of time, so that when the police call for subsequent medical, that they need an ambulance. Sometimes we deal with an out-of-town truck. Uh, and sometimes that can delay response. We also oftentimes will have an officer either follow the ambulance or actually get in the back of the ambulance on a mental health call to make sure that we protect the firefighters and that we keep the person under control. Um, so now we have an officer in the back of an ambulance that's going to Brockton, for instance, uh, right. and then we have an officer following the ambulance to bring the officer back. So it puts the units um, out of service. Right, so those longer run times are just affecting your, your availability for, for your staff. Uh, yes, yes, that's that's true. Absolutely. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, John, did I see your hand, sir? Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you, Chief, for uh, your report. I, I, I love the details. It gives us some good insight of what's going on. Um, just a, a couple comments and a question. One is, uh, it was I was sad to uh, see Officer Murphy go. He had a definite impact on uh, with Impact Norwood. I, so I, I did all the work that he did uh, representing the police department over the years. So uh, that was great. Um, I, I love the fact that you sh show uh, Officer Mahoney and Officer Costa um, teaching a law class at Norwood High School. I think that's a great opportunity directly for students to hear direct feedback um, from students trying to learn. Um, uh, I love the, the list of officers that you said visited their schools to spend time with students and to assist the staff. Again, great outreach, community outreach, which is uh, wonderful. Um, I love pointing out the, the training um, that your department provides. Uh, it was a very busy month. Uh, all the officers took the legal update. That's 488 hours. Um, police reform, uh, the Municipal Police Institute supervision training, Sergeant Baker after promotion took 40 hours, that, that was great. And you have the suicide prevention, which was mandated also for um, Sergeant Baker and Lieutenant Lydon. So that's all, all great for a total of five, 592 hours for the month, uh, a great start. Uh, my question is on the police reform. Is there anything that uh, you would like to share with us that we as selectmen or the community should know that has changed from the police uh, reform that we should know about directly? Honestly, I don't, I don't think there's much that's detrimental. I wish the legislature hadn't done it the way they did it. Um, and, um, you know, there's parts of it that I uh, that I objected to. Representative Rogers and Senator Rush were wonderful to deal with and just in keeping lines of communication open. But uh, honestly, a lot of it is is mandating what the NOAA Police Department does now. For instance, they basically say, well, you have to jump through these hoops unless you're an accredited agency, and we are. Um, you have to have a policy that says that you don't use chill calls. We've had it for a long time. But officers have a duty to intervene. We, we do that. So uh, a lot of those parts that are in police reform, we, we already do. Um, it does allow people to take internal affairs complaints to a state panel, <coughs> um, circumventing the police department. Um, that, that could go either way. Um, we get so few complaints about our officers. In fact, they just got an email tonight from a gentleman who wanted to praise one of our officers, and that's, that's much more common than complaints. We only get a small handful of complaints in the course of a year, and we resolve those uh, very quickly. So, um, you know, the, the, the panel, the Police Officer Standards and Training Commission, <coughs> has nine members, only three of which are police. The executive director cannot be a police officer, have any law enforcement experience. Um, that bothers me a little bit. It's the only post commission in the country I'm aware of that's specifically and intentionally tilted uh, in that fashion. I, I, I wish that hadn't been done. Um, you know, it's a 120 some odd page piece of legislation. I've gone through it several times. Those are the ones off the top of my head that I can think of. I don't think that the uh, people of Norwood are going to see great changes. Um, to the contrary, I, I think we've been doing primarily what the legislature 
has uh, has mandated. Uh, thank you, Chief. And that's the point of my question. I, you, you said exactly what I hope you would say, and that is the town of Norwood, uh, under your leadership, is doing a lot of what the law is mandating. So uh, complaints, issues, uh, we don't have them because I think we're at a, we're operating at a higher standard. I know I appreciate that. The community should as well, knowing that a lot of what's being asked to be done under law is continuing uh, under the town of Norwood. So thank you, Chief, and thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Stonehill. Your, your mic is off. She's good. Oh, okay. Oh. My goodness. Okay. One minute. Thanks. Thank you. Chief, when Paul Murphy retired in January, that this has been First time in 37 years, except for when his father died, there was months. Well, you, <coughs> Mrs. Dunn, you're, you're up. You're up. Are you from the chief dying and Bill Murphy? Yes, being you're... appointed the first time in 37 years that there is an emergency in the police department. How are you all doing? <laughs> You're um, everything going okay your, your audio is a little broken up but i think i got the gist of what you were talking about and i might have mentioned this before um <clears throat> but i just uh you mentioned the 37 years i'll, I'll take you one step further um this this is the first time in 80 years you can't, 80, can't hear me uh, with the exception of a six-month period in 1973 and 1974. hello mr Stoney, we hear you but you're your connection is bad. It's coming through uh, very slow and broken up. Oh, okay. Uh, that's okay. I, I think, yes. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Chief. Appreciate your time and information. Very informative. Thank you. Good to see you all. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to Chief yes. Maurice, now at Fire Department. Chief, once Thank again, we have your written report and the floor is yours, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Board. Uh, I'd like to start out that uh, Node Fire Department is busy as usual. Uh, a lot of work has been done by the new department mechanic, Shane McBride. Uh, unfortunately, we've kind of had a revolving door of problems with the apparatus uh, and the ambulances. As soon as we get one uh, engine fixed or we send engine five out for uh, some warranty work, another engine has an issue and we have to uh, bring the engine back from the, the dealership or rotate another vehicle in. So uh, every day we're dealing with problems with the apparatus and we're trying to get a, a handle on that. And I know, Mr. Hajar, you're looking to uh, meet with Deputy Cody, and hopefully we can get a, a nice detailed list of uh, all the problems with the apparatus and the ambulance uh, as we tackle these, these issues. Uh, we're continually working with the facilities department. Uh, we still are having elevator issues. We thought that we had it repaired uh, with a new control board, but unfortunately it has gone down twice since that was put in place. Uh, it's been repaired once more. We're, uh, it was actually surmised that maybe there was some type of uh, issue uh, with the radios or the uh, garage door openers that were causing the control panel somehow electronically to throw the elevator off. But uh, I know the facilities department is on top of it. 
Uh, they've also replaced most of the LED lighting within the building. I think we have a few more items left to do, but uh, that project's coming to a close. The town should hopefully see some type of uh, savings with that project. And uh, we're also in the design phase of the kitchen remodel with the facilities group. Uh, very thankful to town meeting for a, a large amount of money to redo uh, the kitchen for the members of the department. Um, as it has been uh, used for almost 20 years by 15 people 24 seven and uh, was sorely in need of an upgrade. Uh, at this point right now, I believe Mr. Riccati is pricing out appliances and equipment and we hope to have that lined up and begin the project in the coming months. Um, just some of the investments uh, that have been made in the department recently is uh, uh, I purchased all new mattresses for the members of the department. Uh, the mattresses that have been in use have been there for uh, over 10 years. So uh, good to have nice mattresses for the members there. Um, capital projects that the town has invested in. The new ambulance is in. Uh, we just had the mobile radios installed by uh, Greenwood dealership. And currently, we're working on a few electro, uh, electric issues, not bad, but just uh, modifications that the department mechanic is making. And then we're going to uh, stock the ambulance, and it should be in service by the end of the month. Uh, that'll be good to have a, a new, reliable ambulance. Uh, you may know that after the flood, one of the ambulances uh, got stuck in a flooded out street, which has uh, caused some issues with that. Um, so. The reliability wasn't there, so it's good to have the new ambulance in. Uh, the new ambulance also has the striker stretcher system to protect the, the paramedics' backs when uh, lifting patients into the ambulance. Uh, it has a Lucas CPR device, which uh, does CPR on individuals, so the paramedics can uh, be loosened up to do uh, other responsibilities. And it also has a new Life Pack 10 cardiac monitor. Um, the new Plyme event system has been ordered. We expect that to be uh, the parts come in in the, the next two to three weeks and have the system installed. Uh, that's another capital project. The Plyme event system is a system designed to hook up to all the truck's diesel exhaust pipes. Uh, so when the trucks start up, this system uh, evacuates that exhaust out of the building so uh, none of the firefighters are breathing those fumes in. Uh, so that project is underway, and uh, I've also ordered new four-inch supply hose for the department, uh, and we expect to have that in in the next two to three weeks also. We're going to replace all the four-inch supply lines uh, on all the apparatus. Uh, Kathy Carney and the facilities department uh, moving forward with the HVAC project, and I believe they've come up with a contractor uh, for that, which is CES, and uh, we look forward to having that project move forward. Uh, along uh, the lines of training, you may see some of the members of the department doing ice water rescue training. Uh, you may see them out on New Pond or up in the Petties area. Uh, this time of year, it's training that we do annually just to make sure that we're prepared in case someone does go out in the ice and uh, has some type of emergency that we can rescue them in that situation. Uh, one of the things you may see that all the members will be in new ice water rescue suits, which are part of uh, my capital project last year with the boat. So that's the first time these suits are being brought out. Um, we also have upcoming training for the offices of the department. Uh, Jamie Kenny is an attorney and she is going to be going over the roles and responsibilities of officers. Uh, and specifically when you become an officer, what are your roles and responsibilities? We have an extremely young department. Uh, the majority of the offices are young individuals, uh, not old guys like myself. Uh, so we look forward to doing a lot of upcoming training with the offices uh, this spring. Uh, we have three firefighters who uh, graduated from the academy last week. We expect them to be going on to shifts this week. So. Uh, those vacancies that we've had for the past 10 weeks due to those firefighters being out will be filled. Uh, I know Chief Brooks had mentioned uh, the health department. Uh, this week, we're currently in the process of doing our second dose vaccine. 
Uh, I'd like to thank Stacy Segal, Katie, and Nick for all the work that they've been doing. Uh, they actually had it lined up that every individual received their Moderna vaccine, the second dose, exactly 28 days from when they got the first dose. Uh, so that's a credit to them that there, there is a little lead time before or after, but they're actually getting it on the exact, uh, the exact day they should be. Uh, did some work today with the traffic advisory committee. Uh, there was a, an issue from a, a resident of the town uh, relating to Naponsa Street. Uh, so you should be getting a report uh, hopefully soon in the, the next week or two as to what our recommendations are for that. And uh, just personally, I'd like to say that I'm very pleased with the outcome of Article 16 last night at town meeting. Uh, as Mr. Lane had mentioned, I did speak on that. Uh, very important issue to the fire department, having the emergency department down uh, it definitely makes operating an EMS system much more challenging. Uh, we have longer transport times, we have longer return times. Uh, those costs translate into everything, whether it's uh, we have to pay overtime out to guys that are being held longer because they have to take a trip into Brockton or Boston, uh, issues like that. So it, it's a complex problem. Every fire department in the area is dealing with it. And um, I think this is the first step for Stewart Healthcare to understand that the people are know what are behind them. And we, we really hope and look forward to them rebuilding Noah Hospital. And uh, especially from the fire department point of view, a higher level emergency department uh, would be fantastic. So hopefully it becomes a flagship for the area. And that's my report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chief. Mr. Maloney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chief. Uh, uh, nice job last night at town meeting uh, on, uh, on Article 16. Um, just a, a follow up to some of the things you're talking about with reference to equipment, uh, just uh, for your information, and uh, we'll, get, we'll put you on the agenda if you wish. Capital Outlay Committee is scheduled a springtime meeting for Thursday, March 4th at 7 o'clock. It'll be virtual. Uh, we probably, uh, Mr. Mazuko, if you agree with this, we probably we ought to have something on the agenda about general uh, equipment at the fire uh, in the fire department uh, and rolling stock in general. We're, it's going to be more of an operational thing anyway, Chief. But uh, some of the some of the things, some of the problems we're having with with engines could just be bad luck, but perhaps it has to do with procurement. We can talk about that if you wish. Okay, so that'll be March 4th, and Mr. Mazuko will fill you in on more of that. I noticed you also mentioned. Um, We've been uh, shorthanded for about 10 weeks. That might account for the substitution budgets uptick in December uh, relative to the years before. So we'll see if that uh, resolves itself uh, in, the next, uh, in the next several months. And finally, I noticed that uh, our ambulance collections are up in December of 2020. Is that, was that a full month under the new? Uh, no, actually, those start in January. They started January okay. 1. So I think so you get to see. It happens to be the case that they were up then. So, so Correct. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Um, yeah, and um, that's great about capital. I think you all know I love capital projects, and uh, that's my thing. So the more the more we can get for the members of the fire department, the better. That's great. Thank you. Well, well, I'm glad you said that. I mean, one of the things that we're going to talk about, and Mr. Mizuko is championing this idea too, is getting the committee to be to be more deeply involved in the past. I mean, we our job is generally to project the next six years of capital. Uh, needs for the town, but but we could probably do. Uh, Mr. Mazuko's even proposed field trips, so you might be seeing us at the fire station. And, we look uh, forward to seeing, it. You know, how, are we, how are we doing with the, with the equipment we've been purchasing and the improvements we've been making in the past two or three years? So that'll be a part of the way we change our operations uh, beginning this spring. So, but anyway, look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, comments, uh, Mr. Ja? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, Chief. Uh, thank you for your report as good well. Uh, a lot of the details in there, which I, I love to see. Um, just a, a, a brief question about uh, the plan review. It seems like there was a lot of work done this past month on different plans that were in front of your um, department. But um, anything that you can expand upon regarding Building 26, Building 1, and Building 5 on Enterprise, 601 Enterprise, since that has been the site of uh, 
a couple of events and shutdowns and I, I know a lot of people have a lot of questions so you feel free to use this opportunity to at least identify the work that was under review to help us feel a little bit more comfortable. Sure, uh, really most of this falls under the purview of the building department uh, and where we stood with those buildings is that uh, we're receiving what's called a 34 review and what that is is the the individuals that own that complex have a private company come in and uh, do a, a review of all the systems of that building, whether it's fire suppression, electrical, heating, uh, any issues like that. So once the 34 review comes in, uh, the building department goes over it, the fire department will go over it as to what pertains to us. And then we try to map out a plan for these uh, individual businesses as to what they can do to uh, proceed forward. Uh, part of the complexity is, is that uh, some of the businesses are all in the same building. So you can't divide the building up and say, well, this section of the building is okay, where the section to the left of it is not. Um, they don't have the proper uh, life safety uh, devices in between those buildings to separate them. So we have to look at some of the buildings as a whole, where some of the outlying buildings that you mentioned are individual standalone buildings, and we can look at those by themselves with these 34 reviews and then hopefully move them along faster. Uh, but the majority of the work goes to the building department in that respect. Uh, thank, thank you, Chief. Um, I, I did notice you had a heavy permit month as well compared to previous. Uh, I, I think it's the sign. Uh, I, I know we have information from uh, Ms. Mizuko from the building department, and, and I think we're we're just seeing huge numbers um, with no abatement in uh, with regard to any type of slowdown. And at least in Norwood, I'm not sure how it is in other towns, but certainly we're 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 way ahead of, and, and that's a good thing. I, I think that's a a, a good sign. Um, I you know I didn't make a comment about the substitution pay, so we'll wait for the business managers review and report back to see what exactly is going on. And again, the ambulance fee, uh, really heavy revenue month, I, that's good. Um, I sort of that is it's probably a lot of those are added fees from going to the different towns that we have to, that you folks have to do instead of Newark Hospital, you have to go to Brockton, you have to go to uh, Needham, places like that. And there is a higher reimbursement uh, when that occurs, but we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we'll take the good news when we can get it because it had been slower up to that point. So uh, thank you, Chief, and thank you, uh, Chairman. Thank you. Any other thank questions, you. comments for the Chief? All right, Chief, thank you very much. Appreciate your time and the information as well. Thank you, thank you Chief. All right, move on to new business. We have uh, submitted to us from our Treasurer, Mark Good. He had alerted us about a refinancing opportunity, and uh, he's notifying us of Fifth uh, Third Securities, Inc was the low bidder with a net interest cost of 0.76%. This low interest rate results in a savings of $1,538,854 over a 10-year period remaining on the bond. He's looking for the board to vote to uh, award the bond and to authorize the borrowing. You have in your packets uh, an over a page long detailed motion that Mr. Good has uh, supplied. If there's any questions or comments, we'll certainly review those. Otherwise, I'd accept the motion to spread that motion uh, as presented across the records of the Board of Selectmen for approval. We'll moved. Is there a second? Second. second? second. Anything further on that motion? Seeing none, we'll put it to a vote, Mr. Lane. Aye. Mr. Maloney. Aye. Mr. Haja. Aye. This is Donahue. Aye. And the chair votes aye, so that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, next item, John Haley, uh, 791 Bonta Street, submitting correspondence regarding concerns of traffic. The chief just mentioned that. Apparently our group got out a little bit ahead of us. Looks like we're gonna be getting some information in, so I don't think we even have to refer it. It's already been referred, they're already working on it. And we could just table this until uh, we get a report back and see what action, if any, we would be taking. 
So moved. Any further? Second. Favor, Mr. Lane? Aye. Ms. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? Aye. Mrs. Donahue? Aye. And the chair votes aye, that's unanimous. Kate Sibbing, Sib uh, none, co chairman of the Norwood Council, uh, Norwood Cultural Council, is submitting for approval the board appointment of Kristen Capizio to the council. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, uh, just a couple of things that you want a motion first. Mr. Uh, Sonny, who just made the motion. All right, I'll, I'll second the motion. Would like to speak to it whenever you're ready. You're on. You're on. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, I did uh, speak to Kate Sibbing Dunn uh, earlier today, uh, just to give people an update on the Cultural Council. We we, we allow, according to our um, to our own internal uh, uh, law uh, guidelines, um, nine members. Now, by by statute, you can have anywhere from five to twenty three. We voted to establish a nine person board some years ago, probably four years ago, I think. They currently have seven. People kind of come and go on a lot of these volunteer boards, as you know. Uh, they have seven people right now. Um, we therefore we have two openings. And Miss Sibbing Dunn, as you'll see in the next item, is requesting that we increase the allowance to eleven members and make it an eleven member board. Her reasons for making that request are sort of more hands make light work. Um, they are planning to be more ambitious about fundraising and um, uh, the, uh, presentation of programs. And the more people involved, the easier it is for everybody. So it's, uh, I think, a fair request. We don't have to, if we want to take it up later, we can. Uh, and as for the uh, candidate who's being recommended here, I think we know her. Uh, we do know her from the Conservation Commission. Uh, Kristen Capizio is on the Conservation Commission. So it has been our practice in the past few years to bring people in and talk to them. Uh, when they when they when we're uh, considering them for a board uh, appointment so we probably ought to do that but uh, um, whatever whatever the board wants to do here but uh, uh, thank you they're doing pretty well in the cultural council that's my point thank you thank you well at the moment we have a motion made by mrs donahue seconded by mr maloney to make the appointment as you point out uh, she is known to most of us at least uh, mrs donahue Oh, I was going to say, these are hard times to get people in, and she is known to all of us, so I think it, that they want her, I think we should do it. Okay. Anything else on the nomination? Seeing none, we'll put it to a vote. Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? Aye. Mrs. Donahue? Aye. Chair votes aye. That appointment is unanimous. Now, Mr. Maloney did mention the next item, they're requesting a maximum number of the council be increased from nine to 11. And the things you mentioned, Mr. Maloney, about getting more people involved and more people involved make the workload a little lighter. But I think you also mentioned we just appointed a seventh member, so we're not even to the nine. Why would we be increasing to 11? Well, the, a good question. Uh, Kristen Capizio will make eight. Uh, we have one or two people in the talent bank that we could approach to make it nine. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, the, the, the idea was that they, they do have an ambitious, uh, an ambitious agenda that they hope to pursue in the next uh, year or two. So uh, Kate Sibbing Dunn was just thinking that maybe uh, a couple more people would make it easier. Also, trying to get some people who are willing to take on some more leadership too. And you have to kind of parcel that out and spread around the responsibility. Uh is that a motion? Yes. Mrs. Second. Donahue? I second. second it. Anything further on the motion, Mrs. Donahue? Um, it, people who have young children have, um, you know, it's if you have more people involved, it's easier. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Anyone else? Put I, agree. I agree with you, I agree with you Mrs. Donahue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll put it to a vote. Mr. Lane. Aye. It's the first time for everything. Mr. Maloney. Aye. Ms. Daja. Aye. Mrs. Dudio. Aye. The chair votes aye. We have increased the size of the council, cultural council, to 11 members. Sonia Ramos, general manager, Jakes and Joes on 475 Providence Highway. Turnpike is uh, requesting extension of hours till 2 a.m. for a few UFC pay-per-view events. February 13th, March 6th, 
and March 27th. This is a similar request that we've had several times and they're uh, suggesting the same kind of protocols would be in place. Motion to approve. Second. I, I was going to make the motion because we've done this for years and they've never had any trouble and they're all very careful and we have to help out so people can survive in business. Thank you. Motion by Mrs. Dunhue. Did I, you second that, Mr. Maloney? Yes. And anything further? Seeing none, Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? Aye. Mr. Dunhue? Aye. The chair votes aye, so those requests are granted. Greg, uh, Greg Franks from Senior Manager of Comcast. He submitted the Comcast 2020 Form 500, the annual complaint filing information. So moved. Information. Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Jar? Mr. Aye. Dunhue? Chair votes aye. aye. Unanimous. Daryl Hanson, Broadband Division Manager for Norwood Lake Broadband. He submitted the Norwood Lake Broadband 2020 form 500 into a complaint filing again for information. Information file. Second. Second. Mr. Maloney. Aye. Mr. Maloney. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mrs. Dunham. Aye. Chair votes aye. Aye. That's unanimous. Uh, Michael Sangalang. Excuse me if I pronounce that improperly. From Chatham Road, submitting a request for the Norwood Light Broadband to cease offering Fox News and Fox Business Channels. Shall we forward that to uh, Broadband for review and comments on the uh, proposal? So move. Second. Anything further? Well, yeah. Second. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Ja. Yeah, a, a question. And what would be the purpose of forwarding it? for what review and to come back to whom? Just so just so they can report back to us as the light commission is on the proposal, whether they see any merit to it or not, what what, what action they would propose our response be to this. Well, I don't know. I, I'm not in favor of it because I think it's it's a it's a wrong letter. I think it sends a bad message that we even considering dropping channels. Um, and, and apparently a very busy one. The individual is not even a, a customer of Norwood Light or the uh, cable uh, broadband system. Uh, I don't. I really don't see the purpose of it. I'm. I'm against the motion. I just think we should just drop it. What uh, to, to think that we're actually going to send letters like this just because someone has an opinion? There is no ab absolute facts that the individual is putting forward. It's his concerns, and I said he's not he's not even a customer. Um, I'm not sure why we would allow our important department to look at stuff like this to say, well, yeah, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't. I, I, I don't see that rises to that level. I'm, I'm against it myself. I think it should just be dropped. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Maloney. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, it's it's it's. Um, it, I agree in, in tone with Mr. Hajar on this too. It's a funny thing, by the way. I had somebody talk to me not too long ago, not in a letter, but just personally saying very much the same thing about a different television news station, which which is sort of 180 degrees opposed to Fox News. The same type of thing is why do you have that kind of you know uh, garbage? Uh, why why do we include it in our channel lineup here in town? Look, there's a you know David, th th there's a lot of people in this world who just don't seem to understand that there are a lot of other people in this world who see the world differently from the way they do. You know what I mean? I mean th this is the definition of diversity. It's different voices, different opinions, and that's what that's what you have in a free society. In a free society, you're going to have to endure a whole lot of people who annoy you. You know, who say things you don't want to hear. So it's it's uh, I mean I, I'm I mean I, I agree with you 100 percent I think it's sort of Orwellian uh, you know to submit a letter like this so that we can sort of protect the children or whatever the purpose is but I mean I don't mind sending it over to the to the broadband division just to say we followed through on it but uh, but uh, we're not going to do this so anyway thank you very much Mr. Chen thank you Mr. Lane thank you Mr. Chairman um, you, you know I I'm. I'm conflicted because I understand what David is saying, what Tom is saying. You know, I think we, we need to make sure that we don't 
say anything personally about this individual because he happens to be a friend, a very smart individual. And I, I think he's upset. I think a lot of people are upset. Um, I'm not sure, you know, again, that this is the right thing to do. And I don't think legally probably we can't, but I'm, I'm you know, I think the, the courtesy of forwarding it on and potentially if there's recourse or if there's another thing that uh, the author of this letter could do that might be more productive, you know, maybe that's the outcome. Okay, anything further? We'll put it to a vote then, Mr. Lang. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chairman, we're voting to forward the letter. Yes. Uh, aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? No. Mr. Donahue? Aye. Chair votes aye. Four to one, the motion is passed to forward the letter along to the broadband division. Judith Howard from 200 Nichols Street submitting concerns regarding the articles 12 and 16 that were taken up at the uh, last night's special town meeting. I think that's just for the record. It's a motion to file. I'm so moved. Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Haja? Aye. Mrs. Donahue? Aye. Chair votes aye, the motion is filed. Phil Mackey, attorney from Mackey and Mackey, uh, attorneys at law submitted a request for a no parking zone on Davis Ave to help improve truck turning movements to the loading area and back of the new building. Forward that to the traffic committee study or the police department to report back. They seem to be putting no parking right in front of some residential property, so we might wanna make sure everyone's aware of the proposal and what comments they might have. So move. Forward that to the manager to follow up on. There a second. Second. I'll second it yeah. Okay, seconded, Mr. Lang. Aye. Mr. Maloney. Aye. Mr. Ja. Aye. Mr. Donahue. Aye. Chair side, that's unanimous. Sarah Winthrop, the administration manager for the Department of Public Works, has submitted an updated snow and ice budget was uh, requested, I believe. Information or is there further comment? Information file. I'll second it on the motion. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just uh, note that expenses to date are 354700 on a budget of 975. It was uh, Mr. Bazuko's predecessor who proposed some years ago that we begin increasing steadily uh, the snow and ice budget because the cost of removing snow and ice uh, was, was predicted to rise. It has risen. Uh, Mr. Bazuko has continued that policy and uh, it's turned out to be pretty wise. I mean, we're at a run right now of about 37% with a pretty strong week coming here, pretty strong snow week beginning today. So uh, I think I think I think it's been a, a good policy decision and we've stuck to it and I'm happy about that. Thank you. Thank you. Any further? Uh, Mr. Ja. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I, I do want to congratulate um, Tony and his team for um, providing this information as requested, I think, last time. And I'll also request that can this report be updated each month with, with Mr. Ryan's monthly report, at least through the winter season? Um, obviously, we don't need it in June, July, but for the next couple months anyway, so we can see how we're performing. But uh, it's great information. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll put a vote to uh, files information. Mr. Lane? Aye. Mrs. Dun Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mrs. Donahue? Mr. Hajar? Aye. Yes, I. Chair votes aye, that's unanimous. Cemetery deeds are here for a review and signature. Motion to sign. Motion to sign. Second, Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? Aye. Mr. Donahue? Aye. Chair votes aye. That's unanimous. Mr. Mazzucco, we have a couple items on the agenda. First one recommending acceptance of $15,000 from Alexandria Real Estate Equities for the purpose of paying for Upland Road Mass Works grant application pursuant to Master in Law Chapter 44, Section 53A. Um, may I have such a motion? That money's already been spent. That work's already been done. Uh, but they were requested to um, pay this amount and they saw that it was proper and have agreed to do so. So this is the check for that that payment. Motion to accept. So All in favor? Okay. Mr. Plain? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? 
Mrs. Aye. Donahue? Aye. Chair votes aye, that's unanimous. Another item submitting for our signature, uh, an updated facilities management memorandum of understanding between the select and the school committee. You wanna just uh, talk about that a little bit, Mr. Mizuka? Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. A group of um, the superintendent, the facilities director, myself, and representatives from this board and the school committee met to update our memorandum of understanding with the combined or shared facilities department. A few minor changes have been made, and this was the uh, work product of that meeting. Uh, requesting that the board sign the document, it will then be forwarded over to the school committee for their signature. I'll move. Second. Second. Anything further on the motion? Put it to a vote, Mr. Lane. Aye. Mr. Maloney. Aye. Mr. Ja. Aye. Mr. Donahue. Aye. The chair votes aye. That's unanimous. We have one additional new business. Uh, Mizoya Cuisine, uh, 663 Washington Street. They've submitted an application for Kama Vico's license to operate Mizoya Japanese Restaurant. Hours of operation will be Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 12 midnight, and Sunday, 12 noon to 12 midnight. That's at the corner of Washington and Vernon Street. Uh, most recently was a bamboo uh, Chinese restaurant. They're, looking, they're ready to operate if we're prepared to approve the common vehicles license. We have the application on file, pretty complete. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. So second. Second. Anything further on the motion? Is there, Mr. Is there, is there a public hearing required, Mr. Chairman, for no, one of them? The next, the next item would require a public yeah. hearing. Okay. This yeah. would allow them to open separately, and and then they can wait and see whether they get the license or not. Um, Mr. Okay. Lang. Aye. Mr. Maloney. Aye. Mr. Ja. Aye. Mrs. Donahue. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So the next item, Mr. Hajar just uh, alluded to, the same organization has requested and filed an application for a line of malt beverage license. That's one of the special downtown licenses. And uh, that would require, as Mr. Hajar pointed out, a public hearing and uh, pleasure of the board. Move to set up the hearing. So second. Second. And seconded. Anything on that motion? Mr. Lang? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Mr. Ja? Aye. Mr. Donahue? Aye. And the chair votes aye. That's passed unanimously. Next item is unfinished business is liquor rules and regulations. Uh, we had gone through some rules and regulations as prepared uh, by Mr. Haja. We had reviewed them, approved them, at least um, Uh, initially for a draft, if nothing else, I guess, Kev, because after that action, we did have a uh, send the information out to the license holders and held a virtual meeting. Mr. Hajar did. I think Mr. Maloney joined them. Excuse me if anyone else was there that I'm unaware of. I think the town manager was also there. Um, there are a couple comments were received that both Mr. Hajar and Mr. Maloney, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, found to be uh, an order and appropriate. They've recommended those two minor changes be made to the draft regulations. Do either of you gentlemen want to uh, elaborate on any of that? Yes, Mr. Joe. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I want to thank, uh, I called Mr. Maloney, and obviously Tony was here, not just for the local license, but to talk about uh, 2020 and 2021 outdoor dining, um, I, I think it is too bad that uh, we didn't get more attendees. We did have a handful. Um, uh, you know, we could take that as a good sign that people did receive the document well in advance of the uh, public meeting. And maybe they just felt that uh, everything was A-OK -okay and we weren't proposing anything that was uh, out of line. Um, so that's the way I look at it, so to take the positive side. Um, the, the two changes that we're, we're proposing were directly um, from feedback received from a couple of uh, the attendees. I don't think either one of them were major. 
Um, so what's in front of you are requested updates to the draft. Um, so I, I would, unless there's an objection, I'd like to move that we adopt and then approve a final, uh, the final version for uh, sending out to, um, as our final rules and regulations. Mr. Tunnyhill. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a good chance to thank Mr. Hajar. This has been a huge amount of work. And in my opinion, you did it beautifully because you offered the forum to all of the people involved. And you made the to the boards and to the, the license holders, and everyone had a chance to, to read it and to make corrections to it. This is just like it was before COVID and before all of this distancing and, and, and stuff. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you very much. Here, here. Thank you, Mrs. I'll, take as, I'll take that as a second, Mrs. Donahue. Thank you. <laughs> oh, but you know what? I have to abstain. That's all second. Uh, Mr. Maloney, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to abstain on a thank you for the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, David. All right. So as I understand the motion is to accept these uh, uh, recommended changes to the draft and to accept the entire document as amended as the final rules and regulations. Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? Aye. Air votes aye, one abstention, four to nothing, with one abstention. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, Mr. Yes. Chairman? Yes, sir. Just one addition. Okay, because that meeting, I, I know the focus was rules and regulations, but uh, I, I don't want to put it, put in a plug, uh, not just uh, for, for Tony, but for all the, the license holders, restaurant holders in, in Norwood that worked diligently over in 2020. And I think uh, Mr. Mizuko's efforts, even though there wasn't a, a huge turnout, was to pass along the good news regarding 2020 that we were there, the town officials were there to help promote what they needed in order for them to probably survive uh, the summer and, and fall, and that his office is open to receiving further comments on how we can make it better. Um, that would obviously come before the board selectman, but uh, I know he's gotten good feedback on on the program. But he is advancing 2021, um, and I, I know I don't know if he wants to comment further. But I, I think there were a couple comments about trying to get an early start on it so people can sort of plan uh, in April, and let's not wait for April to come before we start um, approving. So. Uh, Tony, if you, want, if you want to expand, that'd be great. Sure, thank you, Mr. Hajar. Mr. Hajar is referring to our outdoor dining, as the board may be aware, our ability to easily allow restaurants to engage in outdoor dining has been extended through, for all intents and purposes, the end of this calendar year. And we've let a number of restaurants know if they're interested to simply resubmit their applications for this year. Most of them will be um, taken a look at quickly and they'll be able to continue on with their operations. We likely won't be blocking uh, parking off until mid-April as we did for some restaurants adjacent to a public street, but some folks, some places in March may want to uh, be able to occasionally get outside. And the feedback we've heard from most of the restaurants that have done it is that it's been uh, very successful for them. So we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to a return of uh, Central Street again, probably sometime in that April time frame. once we're certain we're through the winter and all the snow is melted. Mr. Mizuko, when you're having conversations with these license holders, it might be valuable to emphasize to them, I know there's a few of them that have taken advantage of the, what I'll call loosened regulations that were able to easily allow this outdoor dining. But when this ends, they've indicated, at least one I can think of has indicated that it's been very successful and they intend to improve it and keep it going. But once this ends to do that, they need to have had their license formally extended and they might want to think about starting that process? Absolutely. We've been letting them know all along that under the current state's emergency guidelines, it's very easy for us to do. And when and if the state changes that, it's a much more complicated process. We have to go through a more formal, um, non-exclusive licensing of public space. They have to go through a premises extension. It's, it's a lot more of an administrative headache to do it. Um, this will probably be the last summer and fall we'll be able to do it. 
However, I do know that there's word that um, some of the economic development bills that are floating around or there, there may be an effort among the legislature to look at extending the selectman's authority to, again, make this a fairly easy process. We would certainly hope that the legislature would have the wisdom to do something along those lines. Very well. Thank you. All right. Any questions or we'll move on? Thank you. All right. Selectman's minutes. We have several. April 21, April 28th, May 5. May 5, uh, May 19th, May 26th, June 2nd, June 8th, June 16th, June 30th, July 7th, July 28th, August 11th, August 25th, all of 2020. Motion, no to, motion to approve. Approve as submitted. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Lane seconds. Anything further? Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? Aye. This is Johnny Hugh. I vote in favor of the ones that I was on the board for, and I abstain from those that I wasn't. Okay, thank you. And the chair votes aye. So those are passed and approved. Travis Fowley, Superintendent of Recreation, submitting a monthly report for January 2021, and also the department's annual report for 2020. Information file, Ms. Maloney. Um, your motion to file, Mr. Chairman, and ask for a second. Just one thing on the motion. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Just uh, thank you, David. Uh, just uh, the, the uh, proposed CPC projects uh, for 2021 were both approved at town meeting on Thursday. Thank you. Anything Perfect further? Thank you. All right. File as information, Mr. Lane. Aye. Mr. Maloney. Aye. Mr. Ja. Aye. This is Donahue. The chair votes aye. That's unanimous. Aye. We also we also have the building uh, inspector building commissioner's report for the month of January 2021. That's the file as well. Information Mr. file. Mr. Maloney. Okay. All in favor, Mr. Lane. Aye. Mr. Maloney. Mr. Ja. Mrs. Donahue. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That's Mr. unanimous. Chair. Yes. Mr. I just just to make a comment, I know we filed it, but um, it, it was another record-breaking month with regards to the number of permits. <clears throat> so out of the seven months in this fiscal year, five of them have been record-breaking months for the number of permits. And uh, our permit fees are, you know, number three in the last six years, but pretty close to, to number two. And I, I think that uh, we have a couple of major permits coming up, but just the number of permits alone in this town. I don't, again, not sure what's happening in other towns. Five out of the seven months have been record-breaking months. And uh, it, it, that's really good. It speaks well of what people want to do and know it. So congrats to everybody. Very good. Thank you. Uh, town of Westwood Zoning Board of Appeals submitted a notice of a public hearing that will be held on Wednesday, February 24th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Information file Information or any other file. action? Mr. Maloney? Oh, no, it's right. Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman, just one quick. We are receiving this because of our ownership of Buckmaster Pond. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. Um, Anything further? Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? Aye. Mrs. Donahue? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Mike Roberts, Senior VP Development from Avalon Bay. He sent a follow-up letter from the previous correspondence we've had regarding conversion to a WIP process, a WIP program. He's outlined the process. And I just think he wants us to acknowledge that uh, we generally approve of or accept the process and intend to cooperate with it. And then we'll send that letter and they'll get started uh, with, the, with the nitty gritty. So can we just get, send the po positive response back that we're ready to proceed? Mr. Maloney, seconded by Mr. Ja. All yep. in favor, Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? Aye. Mrs. Donahue? Aye. And the chair votes aye. Kevin Shaughnessy, Superintendent of Municipal Light Department, has submitted for the board's information the Light Department projects. 
information to file. So moved. All in favor? Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Mr. Aye. Hutchard? Aye. Mr. Donahue? Aye. Chair, vote, chair votes aye. Tom Brady, Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals, submitted a copy of a decision to grant special permit to UAV LLC subject to several conditions. Uh, if I may, I'd like to speak on that. This is a matter that uh, the board was concerned about and we submitted comments to the zoning board. And um, I'm personally uh, disheartened by their decision. I, I think they missed a couple of important points and particularly in the special permit considerations, the social, economic and community needs. I think that proposal down there provide zero in, the, in that category. And um, certainly there was nothing at the public hearing that uh, the applicant offered or was even really requested by the zoning board to show, to show that uh, they would meet those uh, criteria. Also on the visual compatibility, again, without any kind of a closure plan or final information available, to the zoning board, to the town, of what the developer intends to do. There's no way to know that there's gonna be anything down there but the eyesore that it is today. We don't know that it's gonna be temporary while the site's being developed. Uh, in fact, it could be permanent because again, we did not require them to show a, a closure plan and what would happen. That said, I respect that the job of the zoning board it's their job and the job board and select was theirs and they considered what they thought was important and they made their decision. Um, and they did include in their decision a number of findings and took into consideration some of the comments that we made, some of the comments the town engineer made and the town planner, which were important that they were incorporated. Um, so, so we've got something there. Um, other than that, uh, after we take, take any other comments or action on this, whether it's the fly or take any other action, I would like to follow up on related matter. Um, and that being the um, request we got, had from MS Walker uh, for the town, for the Board of Selectmen under their authority under the general bylaws to take some action. But first, the uh, decision is that simply to file or Anyone else like to comment uh, on that matter? Mr. Donahue. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Chair, I hope that we can have you continue on. And uh, even if it may involve finding further information about the engineering, the, uh, the site is so intricate to the well fields that we have. and. We need water for hundreds of years to come. And um, I think that we have to pay some attention to make sure that that we're doing all that we can that check or make checks or whatever we have to do to make sure that we're doing all that we can to protect our water source. Even though it may be polluted now, in the future there'll be easy ways to, uh, to make it not polluted, and we can't destroy water sources. Thank you. Any other comments? If not, I'll take a motion to file. Mr. Maloney? Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted, I think I think your comments were spot on on this one. Uh, I, we do respect the ZBA's authority in these matters. They have a job to do. They've done it. Uh, we expressed our opinion on the matter a couple of months ago, but there it is. Uh, I do think it is overall actually a well-drafted document. Um, you cited a couple of, of the deficiencies and a couple of the strengths, and we'll see how this plays out. But uh, I think you were right on. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ja? Yeah, I, I just want to echo that that point. I, I think uh, we have to respect the ZBA. They, they do have a tough job. I, I think they heard us loud and clear. I think they heard other the town officials loud and clear. I think the document... Um, overall is written very well and reflects a lot of the information that were uh, requested by not just the board of selectmen, but the town engineer and the, and the town planner. 
So that's good. I, I think with any of these issues, we're not the only ones at the table. And so they heard both sides. They did the best that they could. Um, but there is no reason why we can't, as uh, as record holders ourselves, to to keep on top of this uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, or uh, uh, any future chairman to uh, make sure that uh, we're, they're doing what they said they're going to do. I mean, that is our town official's job as well. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Lang? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Jar and Mr. Maloney and, and Ms. Donahue said uh, everything really well. I, I would just like to reiterate, I appreciate your leadership on this process. I know it can probably be a difficult task uh, to, to push this through, but um, I appreciate it being involved and, and admired the way that, that you presented this. So thank you. Thank you. I guess I'm hearing a motion to file. Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Jar? Aye. This is Donahue. Aye. And the chair votes aye. So now I want to bring up the issue, as I said, of MS Walker. They had, if you'll recall, uh, raised some points and concerns of uh, fencing and security uh, on the site. And they particularly pointed out uh, uh, town general bylaws, Article 12, Section 10 that specifically gives the selectman authority on any piece of property in town that uh, has had excavation to require fencing or some other reasonable measures to make uh, the area safe if they find that it isn't um, or is it in need of some such, such an action or uh, activity. The MS Walker has clearly filed a complaint that they think needs looking into. I did review this with town council. I'd like to recommend, uh, I might point out that in the zoning board's decision, they did reference uh, number 11, fall protection, having to do with uh, that they must provide uh, protection at the top of the wall, which I believe is a rock wall that, area that was being discussed by uh, Mr. Ryan back in a letter of November 17th. I'm not sure if that's the entire problem or just part of the problem. So I think the way to, and as recommended by council, the way to proceed at this point rather than do nothing to make sure um, that we've covered all bases and if there's anything we should do or not do, we, we will be informed instead of only partially informed. And that would be to have a hearing, ask both parties to be in and explain the current condition ask the town engineer to be in and explain his position and how he sees the situation currently. And then we can determine uh, what, if any, action is appropriate for the board to take. So there's no big formal public hearing that's uh, required in this process at all. Town council just advises that it's good for us to hear this information, see any documents, any photos, take all matters into consideration so that when we render any decision, even if it's to do nothing, it will be well informed and we'll have a basis to defend whatever position we take. So I'd, I'd like to invite these uh, parties in in a few weeks and uh, for this purpose. Mr. Haja? Yeah, I, I agree with you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do have a question. Um, uh, I'll, first, I'll make the motion that we accept Town Council's recommendation. Uh, I, I think it's a good one. It keeps line of com communication open, which I think is very important um, and provides a lot of transparency with the issue since uh, it was, we did receive that letter from MS Walker. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Lane, Ms. Maloney? Just, uh, what, what parties are we, are we bringing in? Uh, Mr. Federico, you have LLC. Okay. MS Walker, and uh, in particular, Mr. Ryan. If we think of anyone else who's germane to the matter, we could invite them, but those are the three parties that I think are, uh, would be helpful to us at this point. Would the, uh, should, do we want the building inspector there as well? Uh, we, could include, we could include him. He's certainly been out on the site a lot and, and knows a lot of the current condition. I think that would be a good, a good suggestion. Mr. Right. I was going to say, do we want someone from the ZBA and or whoever wrote this decision for them? 
to be present to make sure that we're all on the same understanding of what certain things mean if there are questions from one party to another? Uh, there's just that one line, but I suppose it wouldn't hurt. We could invite them, tell them we're going to be holding that uh, that meeting and invite them to attend if they are interested. How's that? I, I would recommend that, yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. So all in favor, Mr. Lane? Aye. Mr. Maloney? Aye. Mr. Ja? Aye. Mrs. Donahue? And the chair votes aye. Thank you. So now we move on to additional memoranda. Uh, Patrick DeShane, Assistant Town Planner. He submitted notification that the Community Preservation Committee has voted to close the fiscal year 18 St. Gabriel's Chapel project in its current status at the earliest possible date. There will be no additional funds expended and all remaining unspent and unencumbered funds will be returned to the CPA unallocated budget reserve fund. Any questions or concerns about that notification? If not, we need Mr. Ja. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, two questions, maybe Tony can answer. I'm not sure, I mean the manager. Um, is this standard procedure that this is what's gonna happen now going forward that after each project is funded and then completed when there is a balance that there's a formal process that we go through to turn money back to them. And the second, do we know, at least for this particular project, how much money we're talking about? Uh, to answer the reverse, I don't have the dollar amount of what's left in this particular appropriation off the top of my head. We can get that for the board. Um, CPA money always does end up closing back to the CPA fund. If it's a de minimis amount, if there's $3 and 73 cents in the, um, left in an account that just ends up closing with a general fund, I would expect at some point in the future, we'll receive notice that CPA projects have closed out or have been uh, finished if they ended up not uh, moving forward. I think it's good that they take that practice because uh, we might think there's a balance and we're still going to spend it on something. You want to make sure you realize you don't have them. <laughs> we're going to see it the projects that have a, an amount no, of money. We leave, no, they leave it there. Mr. Mazzucco is going to spend it. So it's a good idea they're taking it back. <laughs> uh, we'll take that as information to file. All in favor, mm -hmm. Mr. Lane. Oh, oh. Mr. Lane. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to recognize Mr. Deshane's, um, his, he's actually uh, taken a position outside of Norwood his last day, I think it's Friday, uh, Mr. Manager. And um, as a member of the CPC, he's, he's done a really great job uh, in leading the meetings and um, just really appreciate all the work that he put in. Thank you. Thank you for those comments. I'm sure he appreciates it as well. Uh, Mrs. Donahue. Thank you. Uh, in regard to Mr. Deshane, he, I'm sorry that he's leaving. Since he came to know it, he has done a fabulous job. We, on the first year of this, the community preservation and in the, in the planning department, and even last night at town meeting, he was so knowledgeable. I'm very sorry that we're gonna lose him. Thank you. Okay. Here, here. Well, Mr. Mazuko, I noticed that nobody came to your defense for my comments, so. I'll accept that as a motion to file, Mr. Lane. Aye. Mr. Donahue. Mr. Haja. Aye. aye. Mr. Maloney. Aye. And the chair votes aye. That's unanimous. ABCC has also submitted approval of the Chateau change of manager to uh, Jason Sweet. That's information to file. Information file. Mr. Lane. Aye. Mr. Donahue. Aye. Mr. Ja. I Maloney, chair votes aye. That's unanimous. That brings me to a manager's update, Mr. Mazuka. Mr. Chairman and members of the board, it has come to my attention. I have made exceptionally few comments during this meeting. <laughs> I think we should keep it that way. <laughs> we know it. <laughs> no further update. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board has on any topics. Thank you. Any uh, one like to bring up or question any matters or questions at this time, Mrs. Donahue? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, we've been we had a couple of nights of town meeting. We have another one this this week, and you can see town meeting democracy in action. So if you check in your neighborhood and see that there is a vacancy, uh, I think the 
final, you only need 10 signatures on the nomination paper. And I think the filing date is the 16th, is it? The last day for filing the paper is the 16th? I believe so, so, you yes. still, so you still have almost a week, you know, a, a week to get your That's neighbors to sign the paper. And then it, we would love to have all of the vacant yeah. positions filled. And it's democracy in action, and it's a very important way to help out with your town. So please consider it. Thank you very much. Anything else? Mr. Le Mr. Maloney. Well, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a couple of things. I, I agree with my colleagues on the on the uh, on the great work that Patrick Deshane has done. I'm sorry to lose him too, but uh, he's moving on for an opportunity, a better opportunity, as we uh, are all want to do. So I wish him the best of luck. Also, I think you know, Mr. Donahue, you mentioned town media. I think really the first two nights, at least, I don't want to jinx this thing, but this <laughs> uh, this all what is it all virtual or all vertical, whatever you call it, Mr. Mr. Donahue, the all virtual. <laughs> You know, That's an inside all virtual uh, town meeting has actually gone pretty well, and kudos to to uh, Mr. Hearn uh, and to Mr. Riley, but also to our own Christina Mulvihill, who's been a great help to us uh, in getting us ready for this, and uh, NCM and MAPC. So anyway, it's gone very well so far. I don't want to jinx it. I'm sure it'll continue to go well, but thanks to everybody who's been a part of making it work. Thank you. Mr. Ja. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I do want to echo uh, about Patrick. Uh, he has done a great job. He has a, a bundle of, of energy uh, for a lot of different matters involved in this town. Um, where I think we will miss him. I'm, I'm sure uh, our manager will find um, a suitable replacement, hopefully with as enough energy as Patrick has shown. Uh, we, we lose him to um, our next door neighbor, Walpole. Um, so they're, they're approaching a good one from us, but uh, good for him and good for the town of Walpole. Uh, I also want to congratulate everybody in town meeting that has gone very, very well. Hopefully we can finish up Thursday. Um, some very important items on, on the town meeting uh, warrant uh, the articles uh, to be voted on. So I do hope we get as many people that have attended the first two, which has been a great attendance, that they uh, keep coming back in, until we're finished. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Lang. I'm good, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I just appreciate uh, everyone uh, working together for town meeting. It's been really good. Thank you. Uh, regarding Mr. DeShane's, you know, used to be we only had to talk about people that left after 40 years, 50 years, and he hasn't been with us quite that long. It's uh, hasn't given us a lot of quantity, but he's given us a lot of quality. And I think we all appreciate that uh, from him. So with that, Absolutely. I accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. I made and seconded, mm -hmm. Mr. Lane. Aye. Mr. Stonehill. Mr. Haja. Aye. Mr. Maloney. Aye. I vote aye. Thank you all very much. We Thank are you.